Please welcome Mitch Hedberg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have they, told, have they told you enough that uh, we're recording a CD? <laughs> so you might, you could pick it up and not recognize your laugh. <laughs> you wouldn't even want to buy it because you've already seen it. So <laughs> this is not the target market. <laughs> I have an old CD. See, this one will be in stores. The only way I could get my old CD into a store is if I would take one in and leave it. They say, sir, you forgot this. No, I did not. <laughs> that is for sale. Please alphabetize it. Ah, oh, man, I can't tell you what hotel I'm staying at, but there are two trees involved. Listen. They said, let's call this hotel something tree. So they had a meeting, it was, it was quite short. Said, How about a tree? No, double tree, hell yeah. <laughs> meeting adjourned. I had my heart set on quadruple tree. Well, we were almost there. I got, <laughs> I got a do not disturb sign on my hotel door. It says do not disturb. It's time to go with don't disturb. It's been do not for too long. We need to embrace the contraction. <laughs> don't disturb, do not psychs you out. Do, all right, I get to disturb this guy. Not, shit. I need to read faster. I like to wear a do not disturb signs around my neck so that little kids can't tell me knock knock jokes. Say, hey, how you doing, nephew? Knock knock, read the sign, punk. <laughs> I met the girl who works at the Double Tree front desk. She gave me her phone number. It's zero. I tried to call her from here. Some other woman answered. I said, you sound older. My hotel doesn't have a 13th floor because of superstition, but come on, man. People on the 14th floor, you know what floor you're really on. What room are you in? 1401. No, you're not. Jump out the window, you will die earlier. <laughs> because 13 is an unlucky number, right? Well, then so should the letter B be, because B looks like a scrunched together 13. <laughs> Hello, what is your name? Bob, get the fuck away. <laughs> if 13 is unlucky, then 12 or 14 are guilty by association. <laughs> I saw you 12, you were hanging out with 13. No, I wasn't, I was with 11. You talked to 14 about that shit. <laughs> what you got to say, 14? Me divide by two equals seven? All right, I was with 13, shit. <laughs> Maybe they can add some laughs to that joke. <laughs> they say the recipe for Sprite is lemon and lime, but I tried to make it at home. There's more to it than they act. Want some more homemade Sprite? Not till you figure out what the fuck else is in it. I like refried beans. That's why I want to try fried beans, because maybe they're just as good and we're wasting time. You don't have to fry them again after all. I eat a lot of sandwiches, who doesn't, man? Sandwiches are easy to eat, but I hate sandwiches at New York delis. Too much fucking meat on the sandwich. It's like a cow with a cracker on either side. <laughs> what would you like, sir? A pastrami sandwich, anything else? Yeah, a loaf of bread and some other people? <laughs> what kind of bread? Rye. No, oh, fuck, banana, you got banana bread? <laughs> what kind of cheese? Cottage, get the fuck out. <laughs> I'm not making a banana bread pastrami cottage cheese sandwich. That will severely ruin my reputation. <laughs> I order the club sandwich all the time, and I'm not even a member, man. I don't know how I get away with it. I, I like my sandwiches with three pieces of bread. So do I. Well, let's form a club then. 
Okay, but we need some more stipulations. Yes, we do. Instead of cutting the sandwich once, let's cut it again. Yes, four triangles. And we will position them into a circle. And in the middle, we will dump chips. Or a potato salad, okay. Let me ask you a question. How you feel about frilly toothpicks? I'm formed. Well, this club is formed. Spread the word on menus nationwide. I like my sandwiches with alfalfa sprouts. Well, you're not in the fucking club. I went to a pizzeria, I ordered a slice of pizza. The fucker gave me the smallest slice possible. If the pizza was a pie chart for what people would do if they found a million dollars, the fucker gave me the donate to charity slice. I would like to exchange this for the keep it. Gotta have a drink here. I saw this wino, he was eating grapes. He's like, dude, you have to wait. I, li I like to drink red wine. This girl says, doesn't red wine give you a headache? Yeah, eventually. But the first and the middle part are amazing. I'm not gonna stop doing something because of what happens at the end. Mitch, do you want an apple? No, eventually it'll be a core. I went to the store, bought eight apples. The clerk said, do you want me to put them in a bag? I said, oh no, man, I juggle. But I can only juggle eight. If I'm ever here buying nine apples, fucking bag them up. I saw a guy juggling chainsaws. It was cool, but unless something needed to be sawed down, then it's just annoying. It's like, come on, Rick, can we use one? <laughs> Track number five will not be chainsaw juggling. <laughs> it, will, it will be this one. I was gonna have my teeth whitened, but then I said, fuck that, I'll just get a tan instead. <laughs> I got some tartar control toothpaste. I still got tartar, but that shit's under control. <laughs> if the tartar gets out of line, I'm like, come on, man, you know the deal. <laughs> Fall in, you crazy ass tartar. I got so much tartar, I don't have to dip my fish sticks in shit. <laughs> that's, that's actually kind of gross, you know? <laughs> After that joke, I always clarify that I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't know how much tartar I actually have. <laughs> I believe it's the average amount. <laughs> if we all did a tartar test right now, my name would be right in the fucking middle. I would like to go fishing and catch a fish stick. That would be convenient. <laughs> I could easily get a job with Mrs. Pauls. So they just put me in a boat with some empty boxes. And I will return them to the freezer section of your neighborhood grocery store. You know when there's a fishing show on TV, they catch the fish, but they let it go. They don't want to eat the fish, but they do want to make it late for something. Where were you? I got caught. <laughs> Bullshit, let me see the inside of your lip. Fish are always eating other fish. If fish could scream, the ocean would be loud as shit. You would not want to submerge your head. Nothing but fish going, ah, fuck. I thought I looked like that rock. I got two straws in here in case one breaks down. You know, crazy straws, they go all over the place. These fucking straws are sane. <laughs> they never lost their mind. They said, we're going straight to the mouth. That fucker who takes a while to get there, he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, vending machines are a big part of my life. Yeah, I like when you reach into the vending machine to grab your candy bar, that flap goes up to block you from reaching up. That's a good invention. Before that, it was hard times for the vending machine owners. <laughs> what candy bar are you getting? That one? And everyone on the bottom row. <laughs> I wanna make a vending machine that sells vending machines. It has to be real fucking big.
I was going to get a candy bar. The button I was supposed to push was HH. So I went to the side. I found the H button. I pushed it twice. Fucking potato chips came out, man. Because they had an HH button, for Christ's sakes. You need to let me know. I'm not familiar with the concept of HH. I did not learn my A-A-B-B-C-C's. God, God, damn it, damn it. I get the Reese's candy. If you read that name, Reese's, that's an apostrophe S. Yes. Reese's apostrophe S yes on the end of that name. That means the candy bar is his. I didn't know that. <laughs> Next time you're reading a Reese's candy bar and a guy named Reese comes by and says, let me have that, you better hand it over. <laughs> I'm sorry, Reese. I didn't think I'd ever run into you. <laughs> you're a fucking bully, man. <laughs> let me at least have a piece. <laughs> the Kit Kat candy bar has a name, Kit Kat, imprinted into the chocolate. That robs you of chocolate. That's a clever chocolate saving technique. I go down to the factory, you owe me some letters. Hey, check this joke out. If you want to talk to me after the show, I'll be fucking surprised. I'm gonna have to have some uh, liner notes for that joke. Like, during that joke, he points to the back so people get the full experience. I'm gonna do a bunch of jokes that require the actual seeing me, and the CD will piss people off. Hey, what do you think of that shirt? Where the fuck, man? That's ridiculous. God damn, look at that haircut. You're fucking nuts, dude. Those people will not get the full experience of those jokes. If you find yourself lost in the woods, fuck it, build a house. Well, I was lost, but now I live here. I have severely improved my predicament. I bought a house, it's a two bedroom house, but I think it's up to me how many bedrooms there are. Don't you? <laughs> Fuck you, real estate lady. This bedroom has an oven in it. This bedroom has a lot of people sitting around watching TV. This bedroom's over in that guy's house. Sir, you got one of my bedrooms. Are you aware? Don't decorate it. I got a king size bed. I don't know any kings, but if one came over, I guess he would be comfortable. Oh, you're a king, you say. Well, we won't believe what I have in store for you. It is to your exact specifications. I did not know you guys were all the same size. I think I can set your lady up too. When I was a boy, I laid in my twin size bed wondering where my brother was. I don't have a microwave oven, but I do have a clock that occasionally cooks shit. I want to get a job naming kitchen appliances. That seems easy, you know? Refrigerator, toaster, blender. You just say what the thing does, then you add er. <laughs> kitchen Appliance Naming Institute. What does this thing do? It keeps shit fresh. Well, that's a fresher. I'm going on break. I had a Mr. Pibb. Mr. Pibb is a replica of Dr. Pepper, but it's a bullshit replica, because dude didn't even get his degree. <laughs> Why'd you have to drop out and start making pop so soon? <laughs> the commercial for Diet Dr. Pepper says, it tastes just like regular Dr. Pepper. Well, then they fucked up. <laughs> I went to a doctor. All he did was suck blood from my neck. Don't go see Dr. Acula. I want, to hang, I want to hang a map of the world in my house. Then I'm gonna put pins into other locations that I've traveled to, but first I'm gonna have to travel to the top two corners of the map so it won't fall down. <laughs> you know, uh, people think I'm into sports just because I'm a man. I'm not into sports. I mean, I like Gatorade. That's about as far as it goes. And by the way, you don't have to be sweating and holding a basketball to enjoy a Gatorade. You can just be a thirsty dude. <laughs> Gatorade forgets about this demographic. I'm thirsty for absolutely no reason. Other than the fact that liquid has not touched my lips for some time. Can I have a Gatorade too, or is that lightning bolt me? No. Yeah, I'm not into sports. If I had an athlete's foot, my first reaction would be, that's not my fucking foot. 
I don't want to have my face on the cover of a Wheaties box. I want to have my face on the cover of a Rice Krispies box. Snap, crackle, Mitch, and pop. Hey, how the fuck did he do that? Hey, in Hollywood, it's all who you know, and I know crackle. I saw on HBO, they were advertising this boxing match. They said, it's a fight to the finish. That's a good place to end. Every McDonald's commercial end the same way, right? McDonald's commercials end like this. Prices and participation may vary. Now I want to open a McDonald's and not participate in anything. I want to be a stubborn McDonald's owner. I say, cheeseburgers? Nope. We got spaghetti. And blankets. But we are not affiliated with that clown. He attracts too many children. Hey, this joke's on the first CD, but I added a new line, so I can't fucking rob you of this one. I got an ant farm. Them fellas didn't grow shit. I said, come on, what about some celery? You fuckers don't farm. Plus, if I tore your legs off, you would look like snowmen. That's, that's the part that's not on the old seat. <laughs> hey, you can smoke in Minnesota clubs, right? Can you? You can. I can, well, who the fuck am I? <laughs> Mitch Hedberg, that's right. I like to smoke a pipe because it's the punchline indicator. Whenever I take a hit of the pipe, you fuckers should be laughing. Not yet, though. I haven't said shit. I'll give you an example. You know when they show someone on TV washing their hair under a waterfall? That's fucking bullshit, man. Because that thing would knock you on your ass. No, you didn't laugh, all right. <laughs> who's that guy who's got the cool laugh up here? I hope that fucker's mic'd. I hate for this show to go unnoticed. Only problem with having a distinctive laugh is I know exactly when you're not laughing. Oh, distinctive laugh doesn't think that joke was funny. Yeah, so I think we should only get three honks a month on the car horn because people honk the car horn too much. Three honks, that's the limit. And then someone cuts you off, you press your horn, nothing happens. You're like, shit. I wish I went to see Ricky on the sidewalk. <laughs> oh man, I gotta do, you know, as a headliner, I gotta do 45 minutes of comedy. That's a long time. That's a sitcom and a half. <laughs> for Christ's sake. I've never seen a sitcom and said, I wanna see that character for 15 more minutes. So I'm sick of myself, and I know some of you are sick of me already. It's a long time to stand up here and say, hey, listen to me, fuck, ha ha, don't talk or you'll get kicked the fuck out. <laughs> I got a great job, I can talk for 45 minutes straight. If someone says one word, you're fucking out of here. <laughs> That's too much, man. I'm not that cocky, goddammit. Go ahead, talk, but just use your hands. I got a business card, because I want to win some lunches. That's what my business card says. Mitch Hedberg, potential lunch winner. Give me a call, maybe we'll have lunch. If I'm lucky. Hey man, I did a radio interview for XM Radio. Nobody heard it, come on, who has XM Radio? Hey, I'll be damned, it's growing in popularity. They said, you can swear on XM Radio. No shit, because nobody can hear it. You can swear in the woods, too. <laughs> I want to climb a mountain, not so I can get to the top, because I want to hang out at base camp. That seems fucking fun as shit. <laughs> you sleep in a colorful tent, you grow a beard, you drink hot chocolate, you walk around. Hey, you going to the top? Soon. I had a paper route when I was a kid. I was a paper boy. I was supposed to go to 2,000 houses or two dumpsters.
I saw a lady with a flower, she was plucking out the petals. She was saying, he loves me, he loves me not. Thank God the flower can't talk. What would it say? <laughs> Fuck, that hurts. <laughs> Fuck, that hurts as well. <laughs> Fuck, leave me alone. I'm no longer pretty. And he loves you not. I could have told you it had an even number of petals. I think they could take sesame seeds out the market and I wouldn't even care. I can't imagine five years from now saying, damn, remember sesame seeds? What happened? All the buns are blank. They're gonna have to change that McDonald's song. Two all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a bun. How's a sesame seed stick to a bun? That's fucking magical. There's got to be some sesame seed glue out there. Either that or they're adhesive on one side. <laughs> Take the sesame seed out, remove the backing, place it on the bun. <laughs> now your bun will look spectacular. <laughs> what does the sesame seed grow into? I don't know. We never give them a chance. <laughs> what the fuck is a sesame? <laughs> it's a street. <laughs> it's a way to open shit You think when the guy came up with the idea to invent a bong, a black light popped up over his head? <laughs> I shouldn't do this joke because it's, it's gonna ruin my cover, but I like the FedEx driver because he's a drug dealer and he don't even know it. <laughs> and he's always on time. I remixed the remix, it was back to normal. There's a commercial on late night TV for this thing you attach to a garden hose. It says, you can water your hard to reach plants with this product. Who the fuck would make their plants hard to reach? <laughs> that seems so very mean. I know you need water, but I'm gonna make you hard to reach. I will throw water at you. Hopefully they'll invent a product before you shrivel and die. Think like a cactus. So you can have this product for four easy payments of $19.95. I would like to have a product that was available for three easy payments and one fucking complicated payment. <laughs> we can tell you which payment it is, but one of these payments is gonna be a bitch. <laughs> the mailman will get shot to death, the envelope will not seal, and the stamp will be in the wrong denomination. Good luck, fucker. That last payment must be made in wampum. <laughs> My fake plants died because I did not pretend to water them. <laughs> I think animal crackers made people think that all animals taste the same. What does a giraffe taste like? A hippopotamus. <laughs> I had them back to back. I'd hate to be a giraffe with a sore throat. God damn it anyway. See, I write jokes for a living, man. You know, I sit at my hotel at night, I think of something that's funny, then I go get a pen and I write it down. <laughs> or if the pen's too far away, I have to convince myself that what I thought of ain't funny. <laughs> I walk by a dry cleaner at 3 a.m. The sign says, sorry, we're closed. You don't have to be sorry. It's 3 a.m. and you're a dry cleaner. <laughs> it would be ridiculous for me to expect you to be open. I'm not gonna walk in at 10 a.m. and say, hey, I walked by at three, you guys were closed. Somebody owes me an apology. <laughs> this jacket would be halfway done. <laughs> yeah, I bought myself a parrot. The parrot talked, but it did not say I'm hungry, so it died. <laughs> I get a cold sore, I hate to say it. Minnesota, but in a cold sore, I put Carmex on it, because Carmex is supposed to alleviate cold sores. I don't know if it does help, but it will make them shiny and more noticeable. <laughs> it's like cold sore highlighter. <laughs> Maybe they could come up with an arrow that heals cold sores. I fucking hate arrows, man. They try to tell me which direction to go. It's like, fuck you, I ain't going that way. Line with two thirds of a triangle on the end. Imagine being killed by a bow and arrow. That would suck, an arrow killed you? They would never solve the crime. Look at that dead guy. 
Let's go that way. I like, I like to hold the microphone cord like this. I pinch it together, then I let it go. Then you hear a whole bunch of jokes at once. I tried to walk into Target, but I missed. I think the entrance to Target should have people splattered all around. Then when I finally walk in, the guy says, can I help you? Just practicing. Let me think now, I was, oh yeah, yeah, I hate dreaming because you know, when you wanna sleep, you wanna sleep. Dreaming is work, you know? Like there I am laying on my comfortable bed in my hotel room, it's beautiful. Next thing you know, I have to build a go-kart with my ex-landlord. <laughs> I wanna dream of me watching myself sleep. Hey man, I went to the Home Depot, you know, the other day, which was unnecessary. I need to go to the Apartment Depot. <laughs> which is just a big warehouse with people standing around saying, hey, we ain't gotta fix shit. <laughs> Look at all the limes in this goddamn thing. This fucking thing is tropical. Look at the limes, how they float. That's good news. Next time I'm on a boat and it capsizes, I will reach for a lime. <laughs> Like I'll be water skiing without a life preserver. People will say, what the fuck? And I pull out a line. <laughs> I'm saved by the buoyancy of citrus. <laughs> Every book is a children's book if the kid can read. <laughs> I got an oscillating fan at my house. The fan goes back and forth. It looks like the fan is saying no. So I like to ask you questions that a fan would say no to. I say, do you keep my hair in place? Do you keep my documents in order? Do you have three settings? Liar! My fan fucking lied to me. Now I will pull the pin up. Now you ain't saying shit. I didn't go to college, but if I did, I would take it on my tests at a restaurant because the customer is always right. <laughs> all right, all right. Thanks, joke. That joke's better than you acted. <laughs> Perhaps it's not. Maybe it's dumb. It could be. I hear you, man. I'm not a fucking genius, for Christ's sakes. You know, I'm fucking just trying to tell some jokes. Shit. Who the fuck are you? That track is number 14 and it's called Attitude. <laughs> I don't have any children, but if I had a baby, I would have to name it. So I'd buy a baby naming book or I would invite somebody over who had a cast on. <laughs> when, I, when I play the South, they say y'all in the South. They take out the O and the U. So when I'm in the South, I try to talk like that so people understand me. Hello, can I have a bowl of chicken noodle? Sp <laughs> Come on, I'm in the South, you understand. I mean, I'm in the South and I want some sp. I stub my toe. I need to lay down on the kitchen. I need to get the fucks of the South. I saw a commercial for an above ground pool. It was 30 seconds long. You know why? Because that's a maximum amount of time you can depict yourself having fun in an above ground pool. <laughs> if it was 31 seconds, the actors would have said, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? The water's only up to here. What should I do, throw the ball back to Jimmy? Or put some goggles on and look at his feet? I can't even drown my kneecaps. 
I like the public hot tub at the hotels, the Whirlpool. I like to go there when there's a guy in there already. I say, hey man, do you mind if I join you? He says, no. Then I go and I turn the Whirlpool heat up. Then I come by and I add some carrots and onions. <laughs> then I say, hey man, just simmer for a while. I mean, sit there. As an adult, I'm not supposed to go down slides. So if I end up at the top of a slide, I have to act like I got there accidentally. How'd I get up here, God damn it! I guess I had to slide down. Wee! That's what you say when you're having fun. You refer to yourself and some other people. I'd like to see a forklift lift a crate of forks. It'd be so damn literal. You're using that machine to its exact purpose. That machine has been misunderstood for years. <laughs> I don't know how to fix a car. If my car breaks down and the gas tank does not say E, I'm fucked. <laughs> but if the gas tank says E, I get all cocky. I got this one, don't worry about it. <laughs> Let me grab the toolbox, AKA wallet. <laughs> I'd be a shitty auto mechanic. If someone brought their car into me and said, my car won't start. Well, maybe there's a killer after you. <laughs> I had a job interview at an insurance company once and the lady said, where do you see yourself in five years? I said, celebrating the 50 year anniversary of you asking me this question? <laughs> I walked by a spy shop, you know those places that sell surveillance equipment? Every time I walk by a spy shop, I think, I need to put some surveillance on somebody. Rick's been acting fishy. I need to buy a little camera. I need to buy a safe that looks like a Coca-Cola can. <laughs> or better yet, a safe that looks like a spray and wash can. That would create better situations. Hey Mitch, can I use a spray and wash? Yeah, if you want to spray your shirt with documents. <laughs> I've never stayed at a bed and breakfast, and I don't think I would, because I figure you stay at a bed and breakfast, by the end of the day, you start to get hungry. Is that all you got around here? Then you need to direct me to a chair lunch dinner. I'm gonna open up a chain of chair lunch dinners, put them right across the street from the bed and breakfast. Say, come on over about one. But you have to leave at 11, cause you're not sleeping in the fucking chair. We're gonna have to sweeten some of these jokes. You know what sweet means, right? That's a showbiz term for add sugar to. <laughs> anyway, I was in uh, Ireland performing, and uh, that's right, that's why I left, because fuckers go, woo-hoo. <laughs> and I got sick of that shit. I can't take woo-hoo anymore. And I'll be goddamn if they're not here too. But anyway, in Kilkenny, Ireland, they don't have anything American over there. It's very cool. But they did have a Subway sandwich shop. That was the one thing they had American. And that became the American embassy to me. I would go out to a bar, piss off an Irish dude, and have him chase me to the Subway. <laughs> Say, dude, I'm sorry, but you're out of your jurisdiction. <laughs> but you can have a cold cut combo, though. <laughs> now, this is my second part of my Subway two-part joke. I was in downtown Boise, Idaho, and I saw a duck, and I knew the duck was lost, because ducks ain't supposed to be downtown. There's nothing for them there. So I went to a Subway sandwich shop. I said, let me have a bun. But she wouldn't sell me just the bun. She said I had to have something on it. She told me it's against regulations for Subway to sell just the bun. I guess the two halves ain't supposed to touch. <laughs> so I said, all right, we'll put some lettuce on it, which I did. They said, that'll be $1.75. I said, it's for a duck. They said, all right, well, then it's free. See, I did not know that. Ducks eat for free at Subway. Had I known that, I ordered a much larger sandwich. <laughs> Let me have the steak fajita sub. But don't bother ringing it up, it's for a duck. <laughs> there are six ducks out there, and they all want sun chips. <laughs> I find that duck's opinion of me is very much influenced over whether or not I have bread. 
A duck loves bread, but it does not have the capability to buy a loaf. That's the biggest joke on the duck ever. Like if I worked at a convenience store and a duck came in and grabbed a loaf of bread with his beak and walked out, I would let him go. I would say, come back tomorrow, bring your friends. Or when I think of a duck's friends, I think of more ducks, right? But shit, he could have like a beaver in tow. Cause if you're an animal, you wanna have a beaver as a friend. Cause they have some kick ass houses. That shit is on the lake. Lakeside my ass, lake on. Now if I was to give a duck bread, I'd give him Petridge Farm bread, cause that's just fancy. It's wrapped twice. So you open it and it still ain't open. That's why I don't buy it. I don't need another step between me and toast. I got a fire alarm at home, but really it's more like a nine volt battery slowly drainer. If you wanna slowly get rid of your nine volt batteries, then buy this circle. I have no problem not listening to the temptations, which is weird. <laughs> Listerine hurts, man. When I put Listerine in my mouth, I'm fucking angry. Germs do not go quietly. If you're watching a parade, make sure you stand in one spot. Don't follow it, it never changes. And if the parade is boring, run in the opposite direction. You will fast forward the parade. <laughs> xylophone is spelled an X. That's wrong. Xylophone is z X. I don't fucking see it. It should be a Z up front. Next time you have to spell xylophone, use a Z. And if someone says, hey, that's wrong, say, no, it ain't. <laughs> if you think that's wrong, then you need to have your head z rayed it's like X wasn't given enough to do, so they had to promise him more. <laughs> okay, you won't start a lot of words, but we will give you a co-starring role in tic-tac-toe. <laughs> and you will be equated with hugs and kisses. And you will mark the spot. And you will make writing Christmas easier. <laughs> and incidentally, you will start xylophone. Are you happy, you fucking X? Hey, you know what keeps me from acting? Fucking auditions. <laughs> but I got to be in a movie, I had a small scene in the movie, but I, I got to act with Peter Frampton, he was in the movie, and we had to smoke pot for our scene, but it was fake pot. Do not buy pot on a movie set. <laughs> but I got to smoke fake pot with Peter Frampton, that's a cool story. It's as cool as smoking real pot with a guy who looks like Peter Frampton. <laughs> I've done that way more. Now, Peter Frampton is a musical legend, but I don't know his music. So when you meet a legend and you don't know his body of work, you have to divert from that fact. Hey, Peter Frampton, do you like toast too? <laughs> yes, as do I, it's warm and crispy. And a perfect place for jelly to lay. Now stay away from me, Frampton, I ain't got shit to say to you. You know, I'm sick of following my dreams, man. I'm just gonna ask where they're going and hook up with them later. That's right. That's right, get some applause on that CD. Thanks a lot, have a good night, all right, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate the last, man.